over the last few weeks I've been heading back to the same location or the same stretch of river um, in the same kind of location looking for the barn owls now what I've done each time each night I've gone out I've waited in a, a different field between hedges it's got hedges between it so I've been spending a night on each one uh, and the third night I found out where the barn owls were I say barn owls plural I mean I found one barn owl I think I've also found where the nest is so I'm heading out there again tonight so I can hopefully film and photograph the barn owls I mean it's not going to be I already know that I'm not going to get the greatest of images as it's pretty overcast today uh, the trees and the hedges and the bushes everything still looks fairly kind of dead or wintry shall I say but uh, it's it's good potential for later on in the spring and during the summer I know that during the summer it'll be a lot later nights it doesn't get dark so kind of 20 past 10 I think that I think this is a good kind of prelude a good setup to get me in the right place the right location nice composition for the two the last two nights that I've been watching him he's set on the same kind of three trees disappears out on the circuit comes back about 15 20 minutes later and and does the circuit again so uh, I'm optimistic that I'll see him again tonight albeit it's going to be quite a way away it is quite a way away um, there used to be a field that was just open all the way up to the river bank but in recent years they fenced it off to stop the cattle getting right up to the water's edge because they're letting the river banks rewild that's the word I'm looking for so the cows don't go down to the river now and it, it is a bit better because now when you're walking up and down the river you're not treading in cow poo all the time or you're not being blocked by the cows either it's much better for the dogs also but it does mean that I can't get in the field it means I can't get as close in fact I can't get half as close I'm twice as far away as I would like to have been With the heart-shaped faces, the honey-coloured barn owl has to be the UK's most known and best-loved owl. With its flight of low-level, almost slow-motion-like gliding, they are seen almost everywhere around the United Kingdom, albeit generally around rural farmland areas. Over the last 100 years or so, barn owls with their white faces and large deep black eyes have been associated or mistaken for ghosts and aliens alike. Researchers believe that the juvenile with their white feathers and haunting screams may be the inspiration for early ghost stories. Unlike the short-eared owl who hunt during the day, the barn owl can hunt at night which can make trying to film and photograph them a challenging prospect.
what well, I've arrived uh, my destination where I'm gonna spend a few hours it is quarter past five now uh, doesn't get dark for another couple of hours it's quite breezy I know barn owls don't tend to like it too windy I don't know kind of what their limits are and I'm sure it varies depending on how hungry they are or what they've got in the way of young but I'm here it's very grainy uh, very overcast today now with this eve with the evenings and the gloomy light I know that getting really crisp clear images is going to be uh, either very difficult or nigh on impossible now there's three main things to consider uh, when taking the photo is shutter speed ISO and aperture and they're the three things that you uh, that you really need to be worrying about and you do think oh I need to get my shutter speed right and I want to get as much lighting as possible and I want a shallow depth of field as possible well when you start looking at it two out of the three are kind of dictated to me the first one being shutter speed well with birds in flight I want a thousandth of a second or more and when they're stationary on a branch or it's a deer just standing in the field I know I can get away with um, about 80th to 100th of a second yes yeah, so that's one of the three kind of taken out of the equation the second one is the ISO now the lower the lower the ISO number at least the amount of grain you get now on this particular camera it starts at 100 and goes up to I think 128,000 now the lower your ISO number the clearer your images are going to be as it starts getting darker you can crank up your ISO but then images begin to start getting noise in them like they start getting grainy so you want to be careful of how high you allow your ISO to crank up and the third thing is aperture now aperture is your F number that's kind of about your depth of field I know that I want to keep as low a F number as possible so I can isolate the subject from the foreground and the background so on this particular lens the Sigma 150 to 600 Sport it is f6.3 so now I know I want to stay there um, the higher my number gets the deeper my depth of field but it also means there's less light coming in so I need to try and get that number as low as possible so when you take into account that I want a thousandth of a second and I want f6.3 that only leaves my ISO really in this scenario so what I'll do is I'll leave it on auto ISO set the other two to where I want them and then just keep an eye on the ISO before it starts creeping too too much and then it'll start getting a bit grainy I can drop down the shutter speed which will open up the amount of light comes in but if the birds flying it's just not going to be in focus okay it's starting to rain so I'm going to put the covers on and hunker down for a bit In case you hadn't wondered or noticed, I've changed locations. The location that I was in is where the barn owl's nest is, but it only flies across a few between a few trees, which you've probably seen on snippets by now already. Now that's clearly not where it's hunting. It's not hunting in the fields, the two fields that I was next to. So I've moved a bit further inland away from the river more towards um, Devil's Dyke and Truly Hill um, I'm amongst the kind of reed beds there's a stream in front uh, I've, I'm here because it's really quite windy at the moment and these um, these bushes are giving me a lot of protection against that wind it might be a bit too windy for the barn owl again today I'm not quite sure um, it is getting, it's going to be and has been a bit nippy today 
Uh, in fact, we even had some snow work kind of 12, one o'clock this afternoon. So I'm hoping that this, these open fields here are more of its hunting ground. That's what I'm keeping my fingers crossed on anyway. If I don't get any joy tonight, I'll maybe try first thing tomorrow morning um, back in the old location, see if I can catch it leaving. I have had some footage and some photos over the last three days. Um, the first day I hadn't filmed because I had just come out scouting, so um, that was on the Friday. And then the Monday and the Tuesday, Tuesday it rained. So Wednesday was bad weather, so today's Thursday. So hopefully I can get some, uh, get some footage today. Time for coffee. The weather's much nicer than it was or has been for the last two or three days. The sun's out at last. Um, it does keep dipping down. There's a bank of clouds coming across. So the sun keeps coming and going. When the sun's out, it's warm. When it's behind the clouds, it gets a bit chilly. I think we've got about uh, it's 6.06, so I've got about another hour and a half of sunlight. Uh, the last two times I've seen the barn owls, they've been out about an hour-ish before sunset. So um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. And this is exactly why I carry these with me. One of my original kind of top tips. I stick them in the back side of my gloves. Stick my hand inside. And then slide them down the back. And that will help a lot to keep my hands warm. I can't stick them on the inside because I'm trying to operate the camera. And trying to do this one's always difficult because I can't feel what I'm doing with the gloves on. There we go. Right, oh. Right. Give them a shake, let them do their job. Within five minutes, I'll have toasty hands. Well, this turned out to be a place not to see barn owls, or pretty much any wildlife in that fact. And to be honest, if I saw deer and owls, kestrels, etc., every time I came out, it would take away the excitement of seeing them and the anticipation of waiting for hour upon hour, hoping for whatever comes my way. I spent two hours last Friday, three hours on Monday and Tuesday and four hours Thursday and the only brief footage of photos were taken on the Friday and on the Monday and funny enough I'm happy with that. Eventually I was treated for my patience with a very surprising low level, almost slow motion like flyby from a buzzard. By this time it was getting quite dark and I wasn't even sure that the black silhouetted bird of prey would even be able to be edited into something worth showing. But with some editing, they turned out to be quite exceptional considering. This venture to discover and document barn owls 
has been my favourite project so far as this involved more patience, determination and time than my usual weekly videos. I hope that you feel that your time watching this video has not been wasted and that I managed to put together a video that shows passion, determination and the hunger for all things wild. I'm going to leave you with whatever footage and photos that I managed to get that turned out to be good enough to show. Thank you so very much for your time and patience. See you again soon.